Yo, 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 welcome back to <laughs> another episode of the Chad Townsend Show. The first episode I actually jumped on the mic for a while and it's been a pretty busy year so far. Uh, the wife and I have just had our third baby, so we've been chockers. The season's uh, obviously ongoing at the moment, so plenty happening. Uh, but I've, today I've got best mate and Mr. Cronulla Beer himself, Adam Goodman Good. Thank you so much for having me again, Chatty. And this, by the way, given that we're getting close to the coldest of cold months, is actually just a black tea, not a beer for some beer chat and just some well, it, it is a Thursday. Chat. It is yeah. a Thursday, but yeah. for you, I guess the days don't matter at the moment, do they? Not really. I'm trying <laughs> to I'm trying to keep it pretty reined in, but it's often that a meeting will turn into a couple of uh, couple of lagers of an afternoon. So if you are watching actually at the moment on YouTube, you will see the new backdrop. You will see the new backdrop. Yeah. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, oh, I the, thought you were talking about the new the black doors. And check out uh, Goody's actually new hoodie, the Hazy Hoodie, which you can see uh, at the moment. Uh, some nice Cronulla Beer Co. embroidery in the center chest. Uh, that merch is getting released very shortly, actually. By the time we drop this podcast you'll probably be able to purchase so guys yes at the moment uh, as you all know this podcast is presented by Cronulla Beer Co uh, the newest local craft beer so make sure you head to the website www.cronullabeerco.com.au you can grab yourself a hazy hoodie you can grab yourself uh, some merch you can also grab yourself some beer as well so like I said I've got Goody on today to talk about a few things Cronulla Beer give you guys an update on a few things things that we've got going on our plans for 2021 and also uh, I've been getting asked a lot like people a lot of people randomly people saying to me like Townsville Beer Co so we'll address <laughs> that later in the podcast but um, anyway uh, ads mate we've got a new beer coming talk mm. to me we kind of just let out the cat out of the bag there with the hazy hoodie and we've kind of been bleeping it a little bit up until now but basically hazy IPA coming in about a month's time Six to sort of six point two percent hazy. Wow, India Pale Ale. It's going to be delicious. The recipe development stage with Timmy. Um, I'm trying to think if it took longer than the XPA, but we've just said the whole time is like we don't want to cook this one. Yeah, it's one short of sort of showing to everyone, not just the local community, but the whole, I guess, craft industry that we're not mucking around with these we're beers. We're not a one-trick pony, baby. No. We're the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> and happy to say that it's an absolute banger and really looking forward to you guys having a sample and letting us know what you think. Um, yeah. So not- how, we, how we did the next next level XBA, we spoke about it a little bit on the podcast, was like Tim – essentially brewed two types of the beer would get feedback on both of them make little tweaks so we've you know we essentially we've, we've done that, the same yeah we brewed that beer about nine times yeah it may not been exactly the amount of times that he brewed this hazy but i'd known that he'd brewed hazy ipas in the past before and he'd already sort of had the bones of the recipe that we we're going to use and then chucked a couple of wild card recipes in the mix to then uh yeah get to where we are now with the decision that we've made and yeah really happy with it looking forward to doing our first big batch and getting it out there so for people out there who might not be craft beer enthusiasts i mean you know myself i'm still learning a lot about the 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 whole industry uh, but yourself you know right into craft beer what can people expect from a hazy ipa Okay, really good question. So a hazy IPA, and there will probably be some beer nerds that absolutely jump down my throat at, uh, at this sort of comment, but essentially a hazy IPA is the on-trend term for a NEPA, New England IPA. 
Uh, yes, a New England IPA does have certain characteristics about it that does make it that style of beer, but a lot of people at the moment are brewing neepers and labelling them as a hazy because that is the catch term at the moment. In the beer industry, hazy beers, you know, those really cloudy beers in the glass, uh, nice pungent aroma really tropical or it can be quite floral only a little bit of sort of pininess or woodiness to it but more floral and fruity and the big thing that i enjoy most about hazy beers um, some of my favorite ones coming from mountain culture garage project bolter mouthfeel so it's really that sort of creaminess that coats your mouth when you're drinking it uh, I might be saying this now, and some people thinking, you know, I'm a typical kind of lager drinker. It doesn't sound like my that my cup of tea, but a really delicious beer to try. You may only be the type of person that has one or two of them, but as well, an awesome gateway drug indicate uh, into craft beer. You know, yeah, beautiful. I mean, as you mentioned, yeah, there's a few uh, companies out there who you know already do incredible hazies. Um, yeah, talk to me a bit about some of those you just mentioned. Well, just recently, um, uh, two weekends ago now, where we had the Gabs Festival in at Sydney, I was really excited to get there and uh, meet, chat and sample some of the goods across the industry in Australia. And definitely, without a doubt, my favourites that I mentioned before would be... Um, yeah, actually, One Drop were, was there as well from Marrickville. Uh, Bolter and Mountain Culture, Willie the Boatman actually brought out that we've brewed out of before, brought out a hazy as well. And probably hazies were the thing that really stole the show at the Gabs in particular. So uh, Mountain Culture's uh, collaboration that they did with Bolter, I'm pretty sure it was, oh, no, something, a whole, a, a bucket, full of nothing or something so i had a weird name but anyway it was, a, it was a really really good hazy and um that was a collab between mountain culture and bolter but bolter's recently done an easy hazy which is like almost like not quite mid-strength but more of a sessionable um hazy beer so it's around about four point two four point four percent i think it was so it was going to be a little bit stronger than that around about six to six point two so definitely not one that you'll be sitting on all day but um something to warm you from the inside out during these colder months yeah awesome and if you guys cop the hazy make sure you head on to hunt untapped the app uh rate and review also on our socials as well we'd love to hear from you guys when we do drop the hazy all right, big fella, let's move on to the next topic of today's podcast, and that is uh, the BWS and Dan Murphy's. Can I get a hi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a it's been a busy week, and this whole um, yes evolution for us in the wholesale space of Cronulla Beer Co. It's taken a while to really sort of take off. But when we initially put the feelers out there to have the opportunity to get into BWS and Dan Murphy's stores, uh, there's quite a lot of sort of back and forth to go through to actually get us to the stage that we're dropping off product at these locations. It's so not just as easy as going to a BWS and saying, you know, talking to the store manager and saying, can you stock the beer? Not at all. You know, they've probably got to speak to at least... 10 people to sort of get to the right person to <laughs> give you the opportunity to have you amongst their product range. So what we found out is there is a big push um, amongst the Woolworths group with um, Dan Murphy's and BWS for um, their specific locations to be appearing more locally relevant with their product range, which is amazing for not just us, but many local independent craft, com craft beer companies out there. So uh, get in the green light to go into, I think it's 26 locations. Yep. Yep of BWS and Dan Murphy's across the Sutherland Shire and St. George area. It's epic. So it's really good for us. It's been a busy week for me. So stoked that it's coincided with getting the van. <laughs> which we'll get onto. Which we will get onto. But uh, dropping off beers at Dan's and BWS and having those guys reorder. Um, we've been told to, 
I guess, sort of pre-warned in the early days of how difficult it can be dealing with some of these bigger guys. Yeah. But I think possibly on the back of the last 12 months that have been um, in COVID, uh, there really is um, a shift happening in how people are looking at and attempting to support small startup companies out there. And I think that it's not only in our local community of people wanting to support local and drink local homegrown products that it's going to sort of branch out. And there's a lot of other, what we would say is established uh, independent beer companies across the country that it's taken them years until this sort of tipping point now that they're getting into BWS and Dan Murphy's as well. So yeah. I think there's probably a number of other beer companies, startups out there that are equally as excited as yeah, we are I now think to you have hit that the, opportunity. You hit the nail on the head there, you know, in terms of COVID and how much that affected everyone and especially small local business. And, you know, people going out and getting around their local cafes, restaurants, bars, you know, the hairdresser, what, whatever business it is. Well, that's a, that's a real thing that, and we speak about this a lot. That's pretty one of our biggest core values mm-hmm. with Cronulla Beer Co is supporting local. And, and, and I guess it's, it's becoming a bit of an overused term almost, you know, local supporting local, you know, our tagline is drink local. And yep. a lot of people may not really understand what that, entirely means but a lot of people are subconsciously supporting local every day if you make the effort to you know walk from walk via your local coffee shop before you get on the train to go to work like that's supporting local you could have easily made that coffee at home you could have had it in your place of work outside of your local community but making that effort to go and visit those local businesses whether they're cafes restaurants just takeaway shops or you know the corner grocer hairdressers and things like that Mm. that's you know what we need to do and what has become so much more obvious on the back of the last 12 months is people people really you know see the substance in doing that is making sure that you know everyone's got each other's back in this community yeah bloody earth i love that um all right another project we've been working on as well over the probably the last few months is the dan murphy's 250th store celebration pretty crazy how this thing all evolved really so there is a little bit of a story to it and we've as you guys would probably be aware we've our big push at the moment while we're still on our journey uh, moving towards hopefully the next 12 to 18 months is getting our own production site having our own brewery that's going to be an experience for our community because we've had a big push on social media generating an audience telling our story letting the people know what we're up to so Often when we get a a new account or new venue, you know, we want to go in there, showcase that venue, whether it be through just normal photo content or we might do like a little bit of a video piece. And we were so excited to have the opportunity and the green light to be going into BWS and Dan Murphy's that we ran it by uh, one of our local store managers, Mark, at the Caring Bar Dan Murphy's, if it was okay to come in and shoot like a little video piece um, just essentially advertising that our beer will now be available. Which if you haven't seen the video, it is sick. Make sure you check to our socials whenever it is released. It's hilarious. It's yeah, awesome. It's really good. And a little bit of a subtle collab with another local brand in there as well. So yeah. very cool. And um, as you can imagine, had to get cleared by sort of uh, up Suits. top. Oh to, uh, yeah, up top to make sure that we got granted access to that. And that conversation just also then evolved into yep no worries happy for you to come down and film that content but wanted to talk about another sort of side project that dan murphy's is actually just about to open their 250th dan murphy's store nationwide and out of pure coincidence that 250th store um happens also to be in our local region that we'll be supplying to. So that's given us access to that store that we'll be supplying. But even funnier than that, it's the Engadine store, which mm. is essentially where we and Tim grew up. You know, went to school. Went to school. <laughs> like, it's kind of, it, it is pretty bizarre. So Mark's on the phone to me and saying, like, we want to see if in any way you guys, new local beer company, uh, would be interested in getting involved 
in the launch for this 250th store. So we thought, said, of course we would. It sounds awesome. There's, you know, such a cool story to be told there. And thank you so much for thinking of that, which quickly then evolved into, hey, let's maybe even take this one step further. And if you guys would be interested in devising a, a unique uh, Dan Murphy's branded packaging for your beer in celebration of this 250th store. So we didn't kind of really know what we were expecting or what this was for, or if we were just going to be catering for that launch party in Engadine the evening before the store opening, but it's actually turned into a, a product that's going to be getting shipped nationwide to all of the store um, managers across um, the Endeavour Drinks Group, I'm pretty sure. So I don't know if it's both BWS and Dan Murphy's or just Dan Murphy's, but really cool that our Cronulla Beer Co. brewed beer mm. in collaboration with Dan Murphy's will be going across the country for more people to get introduced to what what we're doing, yeah. where we're from and, and our beer. And, and I just, I really want it to not go unsaid that I guess what we are just talking about before with this whole, whole idea of supporting local, like, Dan Murphy's, you know, and the type of position that they're in would have had the opportunity to do a project like this with with anyone, yep. with absolutely anyone. And yeah, it made sense being that that was the 250th store and, and that we're there and we're local and, you know, we were willing to offer our time and collaborate on a project like this. But I just think that's, that's really cool and there's a lot of integrity there from a big company to be like, you know what? we actually want to support local as well and, you know, want to give you guys the opportunity to work on this <coughs> and get some further exposure for your brand. So mm. massive props yeah. to Dan's. Massive props to Dan's now. We're grateful and, and so stoked to be on board and helping them out and to be collaborating with them. A big, big brand is is awesome. Really cool. Um We'll uh, hopefully, I reckon, possibly even do a, a vlog or a blog, or definitely um, have some content around that can. Yeah, as well for because, sure. Um, we had a pretty simple idea that Timmy really took and ran with it. Like just sucked mm. it under the wing, sucked it under and straight and hard, straight and hard with it. But <laughs> made this awesome um, like decal for the. Um, label of the can that just looks like this classic, like real vintage style yeah. beer can that really does speak, you know, anniversary or celebration style. Celebration. Beer. Let's get it. Yeah, cool. All right. So we just recently added to the Cronulla Beer Co. family with a new van. Yet to be named. Yet by the time, probably by the time, yeah, this podcast is out, the van name will be done. But we ran a name, the Van Comp, on social media. And <laughs> going off. Thank you to everyone who entered the competition. There's been some hilarious names. Um, I just want to keep naming more <laughs> stuff. I want to get another vehicle and name that. Or I think eventually we'll name a, do a name a beer competition or something yeah. like that because it's been so fun. The next limited release will... Definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of the ones on the top of my head are like Vanessa. I love um, Vanessa. Yeah. Vanessa. Yeah, Vanessa, Van Diesel. Keith um, Irvin. Keith Irvin. Aiden Tolvin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's been, oh, yeah, Chad Towns Van. <laughs> There's been so many funny ones. So thank you to everyone who jumped on social, dropped a comment. We appreciate y'all and congratulations to whoever, you know, whichever name we pick. I know at the time of recording, we haven't actually picked the winner yet, but um, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. But yeah, in all seriousness, the van is something we sort of have been, you know, working towards for a long time. At the start of when we launched the beer last year, we would either hire some some cold storage vans or we'd be using our own cars just loading it up just you know, we yeah could. and it definitely wasn't very economical in no. terms of you know how we operate at the moment mm. but it's what you have to do it's what you have to do you know? it's hum days. humble beginnings and we're, that's just kind of where we come from when you're starting something from literally nothing from the ground up like you got to do whatever it takes we're still in that phase of pretty much doing whatever it takes now i mean goody used to strap 
kegs in his back seat and put the seatbelt on the kegs. Yeah, you know? and when I fl- just flicked my car and I knew I was just in this transition period between getting the van and I was like borrowing Ellie's car or borrowing my mum's car. There was times I was in my mum's little <laughs> Kia Rio like with cases absolutely stocked to the roof, just thinking far out. I made sure I took a few photos because like, I want to remember this. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I definitely. I mean, and, and at the end of the day, like we're, like I said, we started this from the ground up. We're in this business to have a crack. We're yeah. just going to have a crack. We're going to swing as hard as we can. We're going to go hard as hard as we can. But now that we've got the van, like I said, at the start, start of the podcast, Goody, uh, runs our day-to-day operations of the business, Does is doing a tremendous job for us, drives around the van, is able to do deliveries, pickups, drop-offs, meet with uh, clients, wholesalers, restaurants, managers, um, pubs, all these types of guys now having the van, which we are going to brand up, which it's going to look sick. Yeah, and it's just, it's slotted right into the family because it was so anticipated. It's just been a, such a massive help to get around, get to venues, and I think it's, going to help as well a lot with you know servicing our current accounts and the community a little bit better just to be able to have the ease of getting product there whenever we need it and just get around and check in see how everything's going yeah for sure all right quickly uh before we get into the last bit of the podcast um i want to talk about a few uh community initiatives that uh we've got going on and as you said before goody our business is very community orientated we want to be a grassroots uh company something that you know we can support local business we can uh, get around run some community events and we've actually got an event in october that we're running we're running a golf day at woolaware golf club so talk to me a bit about that so we're locked in for the 22nd of october to my understanding yeah, I think it is the 22nd, Friday. Yeah, we're going to have about... I'm going to take the dub. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably, we haven't um, completely broken down the structure of the day in yeah. terms of play, but it'll probably be like a team Ambrose. Or it'll something be Ambrose, like yeah. It'll be four ball Ambrose. It'll be 18 holes. Probably start at like 8 a.m. Arrive at 7, start at 8, finish at 12, lunch at 1. F- Drinks on the course, uh, yeah. beers on the course, um, lunch and drinks back. We'll have silent auctions, karma keg, um, speakers, live music at Woolaware Golfy. Like, it's going to be sick. Um, cool opportunity to collaborate again with uh, a local venue golf club, a Woolaware Golf Club that supported yep, yep. us from the start. And I guess like what you were saying before, Chad, is like as we grow with initiatives like this, we're already wanting to talk about different sorts of initiatives that we can run to sort of give back to our local community or other businesses where their whole focus is supporting our community and people that are really in need of that support as well so there's a few things that we've got our eyes on at the moment i'm actually going to have a meeting this afternoon with another close mate of ours that's running a men's mental health evening that was going to actually clash with the golf day that we said nah we want to make sure that we can still be a part of that event as well and run our golf day as well but um just really excited to to be a part of stuff like that and yeah that, so that'll be that'll be sick there'll be 230 spots available uh there'll be a few sharks players coming as well to play golf so you'll be able to mix and mingle with them um i'll obviously be playing all us boys will be there uh it'll be serious golf because if people who know me i'm a I'm a lover of golf, loving golf, so I'd be going for the dub. Um, <laughs> but another uh, event that we're all also uh, getting involved with is by Luke Alexander called the Big Three Trek. Now, uh, Luke or three mates are walking 150 k's, a three-day walk from Sydney to Newcastle, raising awareness for brain cancer, the Mark Hughes and the Mark Hughes Foundation. Uh, we're supplying uh, some beer for the event. Yeah. Um, and again, another event on a local level. Yeah, so epic. You know, not not this event uh, specifically isn't within our local community, but this local guy, um, an awesome cause, an awesome initiative, and just such a wicked achievement that they're setting out to accomplish. Um, reached out to us early and see if there was any way that we could support them along the journey, and we were keen as. Yeah, which is going to be. 
Awesome. Looking forward to that as well. All right, guys, we'll move into the last bit of today's podcast. And that was just uh, some roles within our company or myself. I get a lot of, asked a lot of questions about, you know, what I do about Cronulla Beer Co., how, how it's all going. And a lot of people say to me, you know, Townsville Beer Co., like obviously I've made the decision to move north uh, for the following three years at the end of the year with uh, my young family. So uh, that's obviously, you know, next year. I've got a lot uh, still happening this year, which I'm very focused on. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd address it and sort of let you guys, give you guys, you know, be open uh, and honest about, I guess, you know, my role within our, our business at the moment. So as you, as I said before, Goody runs a lot of our uh, day-to-day operations, you know, everything that we need to do day-to-day, uh, Goody runs, he's doing an incredible job and very thankful to be in this uh, with one of my best mates, Um but for me, myself, uh, my role within the business is I do a bit of the, the social media, I run our website, um, and I also do the bookkeeping as well. So I pay invoices and I run my eyes over the book. So my background, I guess, or I've studied in financial planning. So I've got a little bit of knowledge about the financial side of the business. So I guess... All the things that I've just mentioned are things that can be done right here. Yeah, it's good. On the computer or on this thing here, my mobile phone. So I, me and Goody, we talk pretty much every day on the phone, yeah. um, whether we're, I'm driving to or from training or on, on my lunch break. But yeah, at the moment, like my main focus is my rugby league career as well. I've got a young family as well. So I just wanted to sort of touch base um, and yeah, I mean... Townsville Beer Co. I mean, <laughs> we might get trying to get some stuff up there. A um, local pubs up there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about Townsville Beer Co., but we might get some try and get some Cronulla beer up there. But hundred um, percent. Yeah, glad glad to actually be open and be able to chat about that as well. Because as much as you're probably getting messages or people asking you all the time, I, I cop it all the time. Whether it's either the uh, both ends of the scale, either people that are sh- would make the assumption that you actually don't do anything yeah. or people that it's like that you brew the beer where it's <laughs> yeah, like so far out <laughs> where it's like people think that I brew the beer which is not the case we've got a fully fledged brewer in Tim who uh, does a lot of other things as well for our business it's not it's not just me in this while you know I, I am a bit of a face for it I guess and but in saying that like we've we got an incredible team just like a footy team or a soccer team we've got Everyone guys has and, their role in key positions who do their role and I'm just one of those guys. I've got something in the background of my football career which is uh, allows me to not fully focus all the time. Like I've got a good balance in my life. I've always had that, even with like the podcast, my vlogs, YouTube, etc. But yeah, I just wanted to touch base and give you guys, I guess, a bit of an insight into what was going on in that space, how we run our business. Yeah, and I guess it's, I guess we're at least going to make our best attempt moving forward as we grow to still just keep up to speed with everything that's going on with the company and within your role and what you're sort of doing day to day, week to week, it shouldn't have too much impact Mm. in your ability to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, and if if it does, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it and we'll make decisions and and whatever happens, you know, but at the moment, yeah, like I said, my role is basically, uh, I am the, I do everything on the computer or I do everything by phone. So Tech guy. I'm tech guy. And, um, you know, in the off-season, like, uh, I was out and about doing hands-on work because I've got time, you know, it's the off-season. But my main focus at the moment is my footy career and that's just what I wanted to to let you guys know. So, um, yeah, anything else we need to tick off today? And Timmy, we've got to make sure we always give Timmy a... He's a mad dog. He's been brewing... Brewing the beer, he's finishing his master brewers at the moment, and this yeah. day he had did had three full days of placement at different breweries brewing too. So he's like, a beast, loves it. Like sometimes I'm waking up in the morning, he's been like emailing me at like <laughs> eleven o'clock at night. I'm like, go to sleep, Tim. <laughs> Jesus. But like, so we yeah, love Timmy. he's a massive asset to our company. So as I said before, guys, we're just uh, in the business. We're having a crack. We're laying it all out there, and uh, yeah, I mean, if if you're if you're thinking about starting your own business, get after it. 
Seriously. Get after it. And Don't sleep on it and anymore. We, and and which we try and be as quick as we can to remind ourselves when we do have these moments. It was like we knew it, and you say it to me like almost fortnightly. Like mm. we knew it wasn't gonna be easy. Yeah. So it's like when you hit that sort of tough patch, just almost try and approach it with a sense yep. of expectation that it was always gonna happen. And it's just your ability to deal with that and move through it because anyone who's eventually got to that successful position that you're sort of visualising, they had those moments too, so... 100%. I think, you know, and I'll reiterate that because, yeah, you know, while I guess people, you know, get this uh, this fear or they always ask how the, how the beer's going and, yeah, it's been going, like, well, like, you know, we're, make, we're making slow moves, but there's, there's been tough times for us, uh-huh, you know. Yeah. There's been very, very tough, just like any small business. And I'm not sure of the exact percentage, but... A high percentage of business like fail within the first year of mm. of starting. Yeah. So um, you know we're we're mindful of that. We're just going to go after it with with a great attitude and give it a, a red hot crack. So. And I think the same could be said though if you if you're not looking at it from the set of eyes of like a small new startup company, like a young kid that's pursuing his footy career or something mm. like that, like it's it, people think that it is abs could be absolutely impossible yeah, but or an overnight success yeah which is yeah, not the case time, you know so much yeah, time you yeah know, obviously. yeah like we'll, pl- we'll play the long game you know yeah. it's not our long game is years down the track yeah so um anyway guys thanks for listening today or watching if you're watching on youtube make sure you subscribe uh, to the, the podcast and also make sure you check out uh, Cronulla Beer Co www.cronullabeerco.com.au Goody thanks for coming on today Raz cheers keep up the good work Thank and you. we'll see you guys on the next episode you